Congress and the administration have a moral responsibility to act now, act boldly, and to protect the American people. Senator Cassidy, you are now recognized for an opening statement. Thank you, Chair Sanders. Nearly one in three Americans live with obesity. Nearly one in 10 have type, di type two diabetes. I'm a physician. I'm very aware of the implications of that. There are so many complications. Obesity leads to more chronic disease than any other condition, taking lives and costing, causing almost $173 billion in health care spending a year. It's almost impossible to bring down health care costs unless we effectively address obesity. Now we have GOP-1s. They have the promise to address both obesity and the complications that result. They're expensive. Now, we can argue about the net versus the list, but they're expensive. But let me say, without a profit motive, without something in return, it's unclear that these drugs or any drug is going to be developed. There is a tension, a tension between the need to incentivize innovation and the ability to afford that innovation. And we are here struggling with that balance. Now, if anyone thinks going after big pharma is the silver bullet that if you do that, boom, healthcare costs or drug costs go down, they don't understand what happens with pricing a drug. There is no silver bullet. But as my friend Angus King says, there is silver buckshot. You do a little bit here and a little bit there, and it adds up so the drugs become more affordable. Given that, we still have to preserve the profit incentive for the creativity for drug companies to invest in order to develop the drugs that are going to affect, that are going to positively affect the, the, the burden of disease in our society. Uh, this is a simple example I've used before. When I was in medical school, one of the most common surgeries was removing a portion of someone's stomach because of peptic ulcer disease. And then a drug called cimetidine came out, Tagamet, and within six months that surgery was rarely performed. Tagamet is so simple, it's now sold over the counter, but it has saved so many people having disabling surgery. Now, that is an example, but now we're speaking about Alzheimer's and cancer and obesity and the complications from obesity. And I think we have to be realistic. It is a profit motive that incentivizes creative people with capital to go in and find that cure. So, as this committee examines the affordability of GOPs, we have to also examine how do we preserve that incentive for the innovation. That is the tension. How do we preserve? Because, by the way, if we stop developing new drugs, Alzheimer's won't be cured. Cancer won't be cured. And better drugs to address obesity and the complications of the medical, medical uh, of the metabolic syndrome will not either. So back to this hearing. There are serious questions that need to be asked. What has contributed to the high price of Ozempic and Wagovi? What are American patients actually paying for these drugs at the pharmacy counter? Frankly, what are Germans actually paying? They may pay some money at the counter, but I suspect that the health plan is also playing something. So, so what is the true cost relative to the true cost to us? By the way, I'm particularly concerned with folks with health savings accounts because the chair is right. If there is a list price which is really high and they have a drug benefit tied to their HSA, then that begins to drain their HSA. And I've always been an advocate of how do we make that health savings account more useful, but if it's being drained for a high list price, it is less useful. I'm about that. So. So what can we do to make sure that Americans have access to an affordable cost and at the same time we have adequate incentive so that someone out there with an incurable disease knows that there might be hope along the way? I appreciate Mr. Jorgensen for attending the hearing. I look forward to your answers. Now, it's important to note that while drug manufacturers play a significant role in determining the cost of a drug, the problem is greater, it's more complex than the actions of any one industry. So we need to make a serious effort to navigate the network of perverse incentives throughout our healthcare system, including taking a substantive look at health insurance benefit designs, price transparency, regulatory barriers, and the perverse effects of government discount programs have on prices that Americans pay at the commercial market. This committee has a long history of engaging in real bipartisan efforts to lower the cost of healthcare. 
Last year, Chair Sanders and I worked on the PBM Reform Act to address misaligned incentives affecting PBMs to lower the price patients pay for their prescriptions. The committee passed this legislation with overwhelming bipartisan support. By the way, we need to get this across the finish line and signed into law. And this is the kind of bipartisan work needed to tackle the high cost patients face for GLPs and for all drugs. So thanks again for our coming today, Mr. Jorgensen. I look forward to you explaining how to balance this tension between innovation and affordability. And with that, I yield.